Previously on Alan Wake, I wrote a horror story that has come true. Thomas Zane did the same in the 70s. You will go no further. If I continue like the Dark Presence wants me to, the story I'm writing won't save Alice. It's a horror story. No one will survive. You knew Zane! Thomas Zane! You're the Lady of the Light in the song! He left something behind to help me. The Clicker. Alan thought of this as he stood on the rim of Cauldron Lake, the Clicker in his hand. He took a deep breath and jumped. I can get to her now. I can finish this. was about to explode and the light hurt my eyes. I needed my sunglasses and painkillers to dull the pain. In one of my finer moments of self-deception, I swore to quit drinking. Hello everyone and welcome back to Alan Wake. And it's time to finish this story and like most good stories, before we can see the end, we have to flash back to before for some additional context. Something that will help to make this all make sense. Well, let's grab these sunglasses. Uh, the sunglasses made the world look bearable. Now I could keep my eyes open without feeling like a vampire in the sun. Yeah, I know the feeling. And man, now that everything is starting to fall into place, now that everything's starting to be put into context, I am so intrigued by this story. It's truly one of a kind. The kind of thing that works on both a literal level and in a meta sense. It's a story that's being written live by three different writers, essentially. Myself, Thomas Zane, and The Dark Presence. And so you have a writer who is only existing within the context of himself, another who wants to gain something from this, and a third who wants to assist me, but has that greater, wider knowledge of what this all is. I I've never seen anything like it. I actually, part of the reason I didn't remember any of this story coming in is because it just didn't interest me all that much back when I played it back in the day. I guess I just didn't appreciate it when I was younger. The pills worked fast. The prospect of being awake started to seem bearable again. Huh. Imagine what an apartment like this must cost in the city. There was a message waiting for me on the machine. This isn't dated. Not that I'm making any accusations, but it does it does put his reluctance to go after Alice into a slightly different light. Again, not that I'm saying that that's where they're really going with the story I've beat there. On the talk show the previous night, talking about my latest book, the show was supposed to be waiting for me on our TiVo. Also, there is quite a bit of product placement going on in this game. I'm a big fan. 
Wow, thanks. Now, this might be a spoiler for those who haven't read the book yet. Based on the sales figures, the two people out there who haven't read the book yet. <laughs> Explains this apartment. This last book is all about the death of the main character, the hard-boiled New York detective, Alex Casey. Now, there's been a lot of outrage about this. Why the hell did you kill Casey? What the hell were you thinking, man? Good riddance. <laughs> no, seriously, though. Seven years and six books is a long time. He was a gloomy guy to spend all your working hours with, and it was a good run. But it's time to explore new things. My next book will be a departure from the old for me. You selfish bastard, always thinking of yourself. Well, you've certainly given us a lot of entertainment over the years. And now that you mention it, Casey was a gloomy guy. Never had much luck with his love life with the ladies. Was that autobiographical in any way? Yeah, no kidding. Casey's lady friends tended to die on him. With Casey, it was all about his pain. No, nothing autobiographical about that. I'm a happily married man. My wife is my muse. Well, congratulations. That's great to hear. So, how's the publicity tour been treating you? Good. Great. But I gotta say, I'm glad to be back home in New York. Boy, you've certainly been on the news a lot lately. Lots of parties and, um... You got into a fight with some paparazzi. Oh, man. Well, that guy was really in my face. I lost my temper. I know that wasn't cool. Uh, you are famous for that temper. <laughs> well, I did also write several books. <laughs> well, your latest novel is called The Sudden Stop, and it's in bookstores now. Go get it. That means the two of you out there who haven't bought it yet. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all we have for you tonight. I want to thank all our guests for the evening. Alan Wake, Sam Lake. Once more, do the face for his Sam. <laughs> Our musical guests, poets of the fall. Thank you. And At least I'd been funny. I told myself I could live with that. Hey, honey. You watch the show? I didn't say anything stupid. If that's what you want to know. Okay, Grumpy. You want to ask me something? Are you going to start with me about drinking now? You know what? Go back to sleep, Alan. What? Now you can't even talk to me? Well, this morning I was angry because you said you'd be home at midnight and you showed up at 7 a.m. and passed out in mid-sentence. Now I'm over it. Are you angry? This goddamn tour. It's gotten out of hand. Oh, honey. It's almost over, right? We can get back to normal. Then you can start writing again. I'm sorry, honey. Alan, you're not thinking straight. Just take a shower and go back to bed, huh? Yeah. You're right, honey. I'm sorry. Once this is over, let's go away together. A vacation. Just you and me. Some peace and quiet. This is two years ago. This had plenty of time to simmer. Somehow, the clicker was the key to the cabin. I had to return to Cauldron Lake to save Alice. going back to the lake to finish this. I'm going to write an ending to the story in the manuscript on my own terms, to make it all right. But why can't you just write it here? The last page is still in the typewriter. I need to read it first. Everything needs to be just right. Zane tried to cut some corners, and it didn't end well. Okay, ready when you are. I'm sorry, Sarah, but I need to do this alone. Barry, take her gun. <laughs> really? Close the door when I leave. Good luck, Al. See you later. When I got out, it was warm and sunny. I would flicked the switch of the clicker. Had it done this? I didn't stop to question it. I had to take advantage of the sunlight to get to the lake. On Zane's page, I would stood on the rim of Cauldron Lake. About to use the clicker. That's where I was headed. Alone. 
In daylight, surrounded by the beauty of the Pacific Northwest landscape, it was hard not to let doubt creep in one last time. I could still chalk everything up to a dream, a delusion. I had enough imagination to make up something like this, having been in the cabin all this time, trapped in a story inside my head, gone mad from grief over Alice's death like Hartman had claimed. There would be no way of knowing. I told myself it didn't really matter. My course was set. I can't believe I didn't remember the story of this game. I love the first few minutes of this part. All the characterization, everything that's been set up throughout the course of the game coming to a head right here and finally making it all matter. One thing that I really like about it, besides the blatant product placement, is how in that interview, in that flashback, we got to see another side of Alan that we haven't seen throughout the game. Throughout the game, the Alan that we've gotten to know is that burnt out, sort of stuck up writer who doesn't want to deal with people. And I feel like in that interview, we got to see a little bit of that charisma that drew people like Alice and Barry to him in the first place. And probably the guy that they're all holding out for when this stressful period ends. The reason they don't just pack up and leave. And not to mention, the element of the clicker, which has now reintroduced itself into the story. I said in the last part, or maybe the part before, that this thing has a sort of... It has almost a fairy tale simplicity to it that I really like. And the clicker, this thing meant to ward off those childhood shadows over the bed, being the key to all this? I really like it, and it doesn't come off as cheesy, because, for all we know, he is just a character in Zane's story. His whole existence, if I'm understanding this correctly, could be attributed to just a last-ditch attempt at getting himself out of the situation he found himself in. And now that we set off on our own, we kind of have the confidence to go and face the darkness as an equal, as a peer, in trying to take control of this story. Whoops. Also, I might still be a little bit drunk from the flashback. Well, I'd like to keep pace, but I've got to stop at all these overlooks so that I can grab any collectibles, which may be about. Now, notably, we do still have our gun available to us, even here in the daylight. Uh, we can grab some batteries that someone's left behind. Huh. And there's some shacks and farms down below. Now, if the rest of the game is anything to go by, we may be able to see things that we'll be interacting with later in the distance. But we've spent the entire game moving away from Bright Falls. Now, we need to start moving towards it. That's actually kind of what this is, isn't it? We've stopped running, and now we're on the offensive. Well, may kill the pace a little bit, though, to have to keep getting out and looking for things. But we've learned the problems with not stocking up when you can. Ah, here we go. A rifle. And plenty of bullets. Although I'm not sure what kind of flashlight we're using at the moment. Uh, that's going to be a long way to walk. Maybe I should bring the car down? You know what? This is actually going to be a little bit of a disadvantage because I'm pretty sure the shine on objects has always only been when it's in the flashlight beam. Oh, -ho, I think I'm right to come this way. May there perhaps be another stash? But it lies in shadow. I really wish these headlights would stay on when you got out of the vehicle. Do I have any flares? I do have flares and flashbangs. It looks like I actually keep what we had at the end of the last part. Which is a bit of a first. Yeah, I definitely think something can attack us in the shadows here. On the grounds that we do get to carry our weapons around, unless that's just to scare me. 
I was concerned about that last time we got to drive during the daylight, but nothing ever materialized. Man, you can make a whole game just of this. A free roam road trip across this beautiful landscape. This game is quite behind technologically, but certain things really do hold up. Well, got a break pace to explore again. That's not good. In fact, that almost seems like a trap. Keep our headlights on it. Guess not. Yep. The darkness had touched me. There was a link between us. Always would be. I could feel its presence again, getting closer. Yeah, I mean that's really what this is, isn't it? Me, Thomas Zane, the darkness. We're like three entangled spirits at this point, all vying for control of reality. Uh, not if I have anything to say about it. We can break your throws by pointing. Oh, but this camera, once again, not doing me any real favors. Alright, bang. Hang on, it's, it's been a couple days since I played, so I gotta get into this again. It probably doesn't come across in the gameplay, but this does feel really weird to control. And we're not getting back through there. Do you not still have the clicker on you? Can you not just daylightify this thing? Time set zero? What are you doing? You get away from there, you piece of crap. That's mine. Please be a save point. Nope. You love to taunt me, but a car is even better. Oh, I should have known it was too good to be true. And it seems like they really were giving me that weapon just to scare me in the event that I went down into a shadowy area. Lots of vehicles abandoned on the road. How very convenient. Ah, howdy, friends. Uh, this is just like that nightmare at the beginning of the game, but I'm not falling for it. We want to keep our vehicle in tip-top condition, and as I've learned throughout the course of the game, there is no reason to hunt enemies down if we're not getting out of the car. Seems there's a roadblock ahead, but the light on in the motel is inviting, which I guess is what you want when you're a motel. Let's go see if this fine establishment has anything of use. Well, the lights are on inside, although that situation can change on a dime. I kind of wish Pat Main had been a little bit more involved in the story. This place reminds me of his place. Anything to see? Based on the signature in the motel register, Agent Nightingale had stayed here, in room number two. Interesting. Maybe he left some stuff behind? Uh, Majestic Motel, general information. Refundable $100 security deposit is required on all reservations. No personal checks accepted. We take all major credit cards and bank cards. Checkout is 10 a.m. No loud music, no pets. One vehicle per unit. Facilities are for registered guests only. No visitors are allowed on the premises after 9 p.m. No exceptions. We hope you enjoy your stay at the Majestic. If you're a senior or a vet, ask about our discounts. I feel like a vet at this point. Uh, but that's all for here. Oh, wait, no, there's a shotgun and some shells. Uh, however, I think I'm going to leave that for now. How much ammo do we have for the shotgun? Do you want to pick that up? Hello? Okay, I guess we can't have the shotgun. Room two. 
Well, now would have been a good time for the shotgun. Let's make sure our flare is equipped. Yep, gotta be this one. This had obviously been the room where Agent Nightingale had stayed when he hadn't been busy harassing me. So he had Dr. Hartman's book as well. I wonder if maybe... See, he seemed to really be trying to eliminate me, make sure I wasn't brought in alive. There's an obsession here with me in particular. Photos of Pat Main, the night of the raid on the station. What is his interest in me in particular? I mean, of course he came with backup. You can't ignore the fact that you showed up with a Blackhawk. But I think... Will do. How about you? Now, does Nightingale have a fancy FBI vehicle around here? I don't see one. I mean, this is probably his, but we can't get into it. I mean, I suppose we could always encounter him as a boss fight at some point, just like every other major character who's been taken. But I'm really actually kind of surprised that Nightingale wasn't a bigger force in the plot. Like, it seemed like just as he was about to be a significant factor, he was immediately annihilated. In pretty much the funniest possible way. The plot kind of reached through the back door and killed him. Like, he was almost literally sucked out of the plot! Okay, objects which can challenge a vehicle. That's a new thing. Die and die. Uh, will we have to go off-roading a little bit? Uh, the game really doesn't like it when I do this. The physics really like to hit the terrain. Uh, we might have to get out to cross the bridge. Yep. Looks like another end-of-the-road condition. I hope this light at least stays on for me. And at least we're still using that upgraded flashlight, I've now noticed. They can be coming from around any corner. Stock up on flares. Maybe we can shoot these and blow it, but I wouldn't trust the hitboxes with the way aim works in this. No way. There it is. I thought we had seen the last of you. That's the Deerfest float. Yep, here they come! Nope. Where'd you go? Need everything cleared from behind me. I can't try and rush this. Because I need everything gone and out of the way. Before I take on my arch nemesis for this entire game. I wonder if that blinking headlight will actually help. Nope. In fact, it'll do quite the opposite, it seems. Ah, but when objects are thrown at us, this upgraded flashlight is actually almost enough to destroy them before they reach me, even if they get thrown. We gotta have a little bit of a head start, but it's pretty good. Uh, I'm trying to see if maybe that wasn't a job for the flashbang. I can always do that if I have only a moment to spare on something really big. Mind the gap. No, 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 no. It does a little bit of a hop here, where you have to take a moment when the objects rise to even see which things are going to be coming at you. Everything jumps up, but not everything will be an enemy. Of course, sometimes just about everything will be an enemy. Now we gotta remember to double reload when we run out. That's something that's taken far too much of this playthrough for me to realize. Unless, of course, you have some still to spare. Oh. Okay. <laughs> it looks like some kind of, like, cherry picker or bulldozer, like, whatever you call this thing. I thought that I had seen the distinctive antlers of the Deerfest float. 
Ah, uh, that thing has wormed its way into my head, and now I'm seeing it in places where it's not even. That is so funny. Unless I set up that shot on purpose, in which case this is absolutely brilliant. Hey, look, a boss fight. I would not like a boss fight. Ow. Thank you. Oh, but it's actually not enough. Okay, well, I'll spare a flare, get you down a little quicker. Dodge, dodge, dodge. And you are slow. And there you go. Still got five flashbangs to go. Is that... Was that supposed to be a one-liner? If it's a pun, I don't get it, but... Anyway, yay! Another Irish Williams car. And I will take it. You know, I have to say, though, it's actually kind of nice as a plot device, or not plot device, just the plot itself, that all of this is someone else's writing, essentially, as well as my own, because it kind of makes all of the convenient item placement seem less like a contrivance and more like a part of the game. Let's get the darkness off of you using our free... Oops. Uh, hang on, I'm stuck. You know how long it takes me to reverse? And how easily we get stuck on the terrain? Well, never mind. I guess these hay bales aren't really much of a factor. Oh, look at that. A whole ship just, like, beached vertically. Zane, I could really use your light right now. Hide me. Hide me. Hide me. Hide me! It's a monster truck! It's a taken monster truck! Okay, well, there's not a whole lot I can really do in this situation right now. I could get inside, I could get in there, I could do it, but... I kind of want to fight this thing. Come on, Monster Truck Rally. I've been waiting my whole life for this. I really didn't expect to be doing it in this game, but we can do it. Where'd it go? Is it stuck too? There you are. All right, you stay behind that fence so we can focus our beam and lower you as much as possible. This car doesn't have much life left in it yet, which means we might have to bail and take it head on. That's right. You keep trying to charge, big idiot. We have the advantage here. Although it sounds like others are advancing from behind. God, why does it have to take so long to reverse? And you broke my car by hitting it in the rear bumper. All right, now I'm fed up with this guy. Let's start bringing out the flashbangs. Right after we see what's in here. Good, let's even the odds. All right. Head to head, no more hiding behind the fence. That's way too slow. Of course, if you want to get stuck on fences, that's more than fine by me. Well, that was a tad bit anticlimactic for a monster truck, but I suppose I will take a win where I see one. Who wants to play winner? Uh, I actually love the way they ragdoll when you hit them, and you see them, like, wrap around the wheels and stuff. That is so cool. Ah, you're a speedy boy. That's why you're taking a little longer. Well, I would be doing a public disservice if I didn't hunt you down. Uh, <laughs> you can die any time. Is there anything upstairs in this barn? Yeah, try and walk a little slower, Alan. You're gonna exhaust yourself. One solitary flare. Oop. You came out of nowhere! Oh, are you another... Nope, you're not speedy! But you have a friend. Yep. I hate to waste the flare on two guys, so I won't. Now, this house looks enterable, but it's not. Okay, so what's the point of this place? If you guys are just going to keep spawning in the fields, I should probably get going. Uh, some of this game's most climactic moments, especially the driving segments, are interrupted by having spaces for you to stop, like every two feet. The driving segments are actually never all that big. 
but it's always a good feeling when you get a moment to get up to speed. Oh, look at the shadows moving over the landscape. No! Oh, that's just great! Pull over. Yep, you're gonna be throwing everything you've got at me now, but that's because you know you're in trouble. And trouble is coming. At a very slow pace. Come on, push forward. Uh, I was hoping that was an enterable vehicle and I'd be able to push it out, but no such luck, I guess. And that goop is coating the ground, yeah. This thing's been working overtime ahead of me to block my path and make sure I don't reach that cabin. Which, again, motivations. I thought you wanted me to finish this manuscript, or maybe... Maybe it's because it knows I've caught on and it's given up on whatever goals it had for me. Now it just wants to stop me. Yep, here you come. Yep, now it's time for a flare. Pop goes the weasel. Up goes your face. Reload, reload, reload. We have time. I don't think the skinny boys ever throw anything. More ammo munition for a shotgun we don't have, but some pistol ammo as well. Yep, it's gearing us up. I think something big is coming. Okay. Let's slow you down right there so that you'll explode. Then I'm out. And hope they don't come from behind. Yep. Couple of speedies. Nope, you're just skinnies. And here they come from behind. Alright, boom. You'll stay right there. Come on, explode thing, please. Uh, I don't think they'll be close enough for that to hurt them. We need to put you guys in a linear fashion. The, oh, but they, they just won't stop. Okay, flare. Uh, flashbang. We need to thin their numbers now. That's going to be critical. They're still flanking me. They're still on multiple sides. And we're running low on health now. Although it seems like they've listened to my complaints and there's notably fewer heavies now. I haven't seen any in regular combat and only a couple in the drive-in. Okay, that's in motion, so it's probably one of the flares I used. How many do we have left? Four? Okay, we're still fine. And some replenishments right here. Wow, it really thought I was going to take the shotgun. But unless it's the upgraded semi-auto shotgun, I just can't be asked. Ow. Ow, ow. See, if they get one hit in, they're very likely to get multiple hits. Manuscript page. We actually haven't seen those in, like, a while. Maybe I just haven't been exploring as much, or maybe the game even wants me to get a move on. Or it just got annoyed because it realized I'm not reading them anymore. Probably a lot of additional missed context, but it really slowed down the videos a lot. This game has a way about its art design where a lot of the bushes and foliage look like silhouettes in the dark. Definitely intentional and very, very good design. Oh, great. Yeah, basically storage for things that can come to life and attack me. And that light's not going to last, is it? One thing I could change about the driving, it would be to allow the headlights to stay on when you get out. That way you can strategize and basically use them as a mobile fortress. Something you could get out and defend on foot. Yep. 
And even though we've now met, I can still hear Miss Weaver's breathing. Or at least I assume that's what it's supposed to be. Blair! Ow! You know, I really don't appreciate how in some of these encounters, it comes out of the... It comes out of the slow-mo in a way where you don't actually have the ability to react before they hit you. Like, even if I'm hitting the button already, you're going to get that first hit. Oh, a whole bunch of flares, a flashbang. That's a good haul. Uh, we can get in. All visitors must see the yard manager. You must sign a liability waiver before entering the yard. If you're looking for a specific part, ask for it first. For you pull it, you must bring your own tools. Wear protective clothing. Warning, junk piles may shift. Hazardous area. Let's be ready. Whole lot of supplies inside, but very likely taken as well. Yep, you didn't even get a slow-mo. Yep, here they come. Bang, bang, bang. Clear up that avenue. And there we go. Yeah, I don't need your help. This is going to be a pull-it-yourself job. And a hunting rifle, which will give us more ammo. Although I don't really tend to use it a whole lot, I really only need it for, like, big swarms and heavies, who I tend to save it for. But we're not done yet. We've still got to get upstairs. Ah, flare gun. And some flashbangs. You know, typical junkyard equipment for the raccoons. Oh, and there's a stair pile thing leading right down. But we gotta push the button. Get that gate open. Hi. That was actually, okay, that actually did unnerve me a little bit in like the stomach sinking way. The stomach sinking type of jump scare where something about the smoothness and the casualness of the way he just strolled in. Like, it took me a second to process. Oh, it kind of makes me think this game would be a lot... ...scarier if it didn't announce every single encounter. I sort of saw the value in it early on, where it's like, okay, we're gonna show you a couple, but you need to be aware of the ones that we didn't show you. But it's just getting a little bit old now. Reverse. These reverse controls are so sluggish. Die. Now I may be getting out here, which is why I do want to end all of these guys. Oh, great. Are you going to want me to jump a tire fire or something? I can see that crane moving, but I can't imagine there's anyone on duty right now. Let's have a look in and amongst the junk. Maybe we can find something worthwhile. One man's trash is another man's treasure, and maybe one man's trash with some flashbangs. Well, everyone dreams of doing something like this. Well, that was anticlimactic. Yeah, these are really more speed bumps than epic jumps. And... This looks like a boss arena if I ever saw one. Let me guess, the gladiator shall enter through those doors. Also, maybe we should be avoiding this thing. Yep, let's just keep our vehicle off to the side so that it doesn't immediately get plowed into as soon as this happens. Keep our flares at the ready. I had to get the container out of my way. There had to be a way to power up the container lift. Well, it's probably that up there. Give us a ground segment before our bullfight boss. And we are full up on batteries, which is very, very good. Oh, 
flashbangs as well. And more flare gun ammo. We have three flare gun, 11 flares, eight flashbangs, so we gotta use this stuff. There's no point in being stingy right now. Yeah, something is absolutely, like, 100% going to enter the very instant we push that button. Nope, even before. Okay, well, uh, screw you. I got you down a fair amount. We have our upgraded flashlight. I actually feel pretty confident in being able to take you. Unless something like that happens, of course. <laughs> and you run over your buddies. If we get you down, oh, we can even let it run you over. No, unfortunately, we just ended up saving you, which we'll have to undo now. Sorry, not sorry. Man, I've been getting real annoyed with some of the combat sections in this game, but every so-called difficult encounter so far has been a bit of an anticlimax, except for the one in that tunnel. Oh, and I, I will have to say, just for the crazy awesomeness of it, I do appreciate the monster truck battle. Not quite good enough. Oh, I see. It's raising slowly so that it would give us kind of that option of waiting for it to rise or staying and fighting. Well, give me my checkpoint. Do I not get the checkpoint if I pass in a vehicle? Hang on, no. Give me my checkpoint. I really, really want that. I would hate to have to do all that again. We're way out in the country now. So far off the main road, it's probably considerably increasing the length of time it takes to get back to Cauldron Lake. I wonder if we're not maybe passing some familiar locations without me even noticing. There's another mine entrance across the way. I think this might be that rundown old town we went through in uh, Chapter 3. The one that was just off of the mine. No, I think this is something different. And, as per usual, it looks like we're going in there. When I told Barry my plan back in the well-lit room, I'd acted as if I knew what I was doing. I didn't. I was operating on the shifting logic of a dream. I had to fight my way to the lake through the horrors of the night. I had to flick an old battered light switch imbued with childhood magic. I had to write a happy ending to a horror story. I had to save my wife from the dark prison she was being held in. You have truly, by referencing dream logic, ascended to become a worthy co-commentator. Uh, thank you once again, Miss Weaver. I'm sure these things will be made use of as soon as we arrive. I just can't bring myself to start flinging flashbangs, but I know I should be. The flare gun, even less so. You know what it is? The flare gun, it provides a more immediate safety, while the flashbang provides a more permanent one. You wouldn't think it would make a difference, but every time I drop a flashbang at my feet, I always find myself just anticipating the moment it'll finally blow. Those few seconds really do make a tremendous difference. Even more. It's gotta be... Uh, it's getting us ready for something huge. Will you let me take this shotgun? Thank you. How much ammo do we have for that? A whole ton, so let's not be stingy. In fact... For now, let's use it in place of the revolver. I will never give her to you. Yep. 
Yep. Yes, sir. Already claiming victims. You're at a distance, so pistol is best. But this trickle is going to become a flood soon, isn't it? We got another one to use. Well, we have ways of dealing with that. Wow, it wasn't even enough. Yeah, you guys always show up as like a mini boss, but I've never been impressed with you. This truly is the part of the dream where you're overwhelmed with confidence. Where all the previously scary things no longer have the same effect. You already know the outcome and so nothing can harm you. But I don't know the outcome. I truly don't remember how this ends. Nah. This is the location of the real battle. Who else? Come on. I know you're skulking about over there, yet you can't hide. Uh... Guys? Oh, I guess you can hide. As soon as I turn around, you show up. Alright, well, we can handle that quite quickly. Yeah, they were all just waiting for me to leave. How's that for video game logic? They knew that sooner or later I'd have to get off this thing. Bunch more. Okie doke. Yep, you're taking advantage of those flanks now, but it's too little too late. Bye. Toss another. Don't let you guys get too close. Oh, wow, no, hang on, you're not dead, you're not dead. Toss another. Two chainsaws, but it will not be enough. We'll have to deal with you manually, but that's all right. Yeah, they tried to pull a twisty turn there, but it didn't work out for them in the end. Yeah, that was actually, given all the hardware they gave me, that was a little bit on the easy side. More manuscript. Man, I would so love to live here. Look at all this urban exploration potential just in the outskirts of the town. I wonder if things really are this dense in the Pacific Northwest. I mean, I know that there's a lot of abandoned churches and schoolhouses and grain silos all throughout the Midwest. Straight off the cliff. Howdy. Anybody come from behind? No? Just you? Oh, were you late to the party? Were you supposed to be part of that other group? Well, that's alright. Still have plenty of ammo for everyone. I could see Mirror Peak in the distance. That's where Cauldron Lake was. Wow, we've still got a long way to go. Flare gun ammo. A lot more flare gun ammo. This might be the most we've ever had. Okay, I've been looking around for a button. But I do see that lever. You're seriously not thinking about... Okay. Okie doke. These birds show up literally every time you attempt to do something like this, but sure. Fifth time's the charm. You didn't even have to have us release the break. It could have happened just from when we landed in it. You guys scouting for your friends? Go on, get out of here. Yeah, you do that. Here they come. Oh, I am ready. 
And I am not interested in hearing any of your birdie sass. Where are you coming from next? It could be from any angle. No, that's it? Really? Oh, that's a little... Uh, like most combat in this part, that's a little bit underwhelming. The environment's actually doing more to kill me than you are. Well, let's climb up. See, all this has, like, the air of a climax, driving through the sudden onset night through a cloud of birds and black smoke. Uh, but you're really failing to bring the threat, I must say. Oh, wait, there's a checkpoint down there. Hmm. There's actually quite a lot of area to explore here without going over the tops. Ah, another stash. I mean, I'm doing it for the sake of exploration, but at this point, do I even need all this stuff? Answer, any box with flashbangs is a friend of mine. You guys again? Okie doke. Yeah, even the, the upgraded flashlight is kind of enough for a single swarm. Any more of you coming? No? Man, it's so weird how they were willing to send so much more at me when I had so much less. And it's not even like it's trying to wear me down in preparation for the final boss because... Well, I, I just... It keeps resupplying me. Yep, get out of here. You want to come back and try again? Yeah. You clip through that wood. See if I care. Where are they now? Oop. Coming from above, huh? Changing tactics? Well, I like the initiative, but it's unfortunately not going to work out for you. Come again. Literally killing you with the passive light. Alright. Another... Another hill, another abandoned town. And surely a whole lot of guys in amongst this. Nope. Oh yeah, there actually are a whole lot of you. Okay, if you could all just cluster together, thanks. There we go. And a big boy which we can use a flare gun with. We can always spare a little bit more. Let's weaken you a little bit so that hopefully it'll actually kill you and we won't have to waste ammo. Uh, this thing actually completely... This flashlight is so good, it wore you down by accident. I mean, on the one hand, it feels a little anticlimactic, but also it does fit with the story beat of the moment. How we're filled with newfound confidence, and all of this is more of a desperation move on the part of the darkness rather than a show of power. More stuff? Uh, the way this game is doling out ammo and supplies right now is like going over to my Italian grandma's house. It's like, please, I can't eat any more. And then she points a gun at you and says... Oh, yes, you can. Weird how nostalgic this feels. Descending into the dark and the fog. Hearing whispers all around me. Good thing I didn't take that path, huh? Are you still a threat? You are, though. Anybody around me? Oh, with these fast guys, I can never tell if it's more than one. I think it is just the one, though. So let's do the usual. Just keep them in our sight, stop them from getting around us, and we'll be okay. Even better if you happen to get stuck. And that's that. 
Really, you were able to take this thing for long enough to drop it in front of me, but not enough to actually use it as a continually effective weapon. I was a lot more scared of that truck than I was of the Speedy Boy. More guys. Nope. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. You're undeterred. Well, maybe this will deter you. And another one of these generators. We actually haven't seen one of these in gameplay in quite a while. Grab more lootables. Yeah, this thing really wants me to arrive on a full stomach. That looks like a boat propeller. What is it with this thing picking up seaborne vessels? And pieces of them. Hello. Don't think you can come up behind me. Yeah, I think there's more than one. There's more than one. A big boy and a speedy boy. So we're going to want to manage wisely. Nope. Double dodge. That's the trick with the heavies. Flare just in time. Let's get you first. While we have a moment. And now we can focus our attention on the flash. I find it's good, actually, to let them get confident, let them get close to you while hitting them with the passive flashlight, and then by the time you get close, you hit them with the full beam, and they've worn their health down some. It's actually not really good to be pointing it at them from a distance, uh, because then they'll back off, and it takes longer, and you waste more batteries. Oh, what are you doing now? Oop. Nope. Die, please. Die, sir, at your earliest convenience. Yep, this thing's put together a naval fleet. Thankfully, it never carries them past the initial drop. That did, like, nothing when it exploded. Wow. Where'd you go? Yeah, that's actually kind of a waste of a shotgun shell. That was, like, such a small pop. I can hear you all over, but I can't see anything. No thanks to this camera. I know that there's two of you. I'm pretty sure there's at least two of you. That will help, but it actually just sends you scurrying off. So a flare really isn't the play. We want to allow you to get a little closer, actually. There we go. That's one down. Which makes things quite a bit easier for us. It's all about dividing up your attention. Bang, bang, bang. You know, I've noticed that when you're when you point the shotgun like that, the flashlight actually makes it look like there's like a box mag attached. It actually sort of gives the silhouette of like a Tommy gun or something. More flashbangs. Aw, oh, Grandma, I can't eat any more flashbangs. It's like I'm making more liberal use of them than ever, and I still can't use them as fast as I get them. Oh, no, no, no. I, I meant to use a flashbang there. Guys, guys, I'm going to wait for this thing to go away and wait for you to close on me. Come on. Everybody gather around. Come on. Right here. Thank you. Oop, ow, dodge, please. Oh, that mechanic still isn't working. I just haven't noticed in a while because I've been so weighted down with things that can kill everything instantly. Let me guess. That crane is about to become an issue. How about you follow me over here since these things don't appear to do anything to me? Maybe that'll be different now. Okay, that was actually kind of cinematic and cool. In contrast to many of the other slow-mo moments in the game. Such as every time Alan jumps. Uh, 
Uh, feels like this whole gauntlet leading up to the end is going on forever. Yeah, let's be somewhere else other than here. Imagine if that thing busted open and there was a bunch of Taken inside. Imagine if it was like the Rugrats movie and there was a bunch of Taken monkeys inside. Great, now I'm thinking about Taken Sasquatch again and I'm constantly looking over my shoulder. Okay. We could sit here and deal with the Dark Fleet. Or we could run up to that checkpoint and make everything go away. Thank you. Another stash. Sometimes they're not even hidden. Sometimes they're right on the main path that the game wants you to take. 11 flashbangs. Honestly, it should be our primary at this point. Wow, that statement was worth climbing a staircase for. Oh, wait. But more shotgun over here. Almost didn't notice it. All right. Let's have a look at this and predict where they're going to come from. Enough open areas that it could be from anywhere, really. This might be one of those defend and wait for the elevator moments. Well, we've got plenty of supplies for that. I needed to get the generator running. And where is that? Any cables we can follow? Probably goes to here. And inside this building. No? Oh, I see. It's this over here. Even more. God game. This is the kind of thing that almost makes me think that maybe I accidentally changed, like, a difficulty setting or something. Okay, flash out. I don't even care. I'm just gonna start giving these things out like candy. Actually, just start getting closer. One of you just killed yourself. Uh, boom! You guys are literally just electrocuting yourselves before I even get the chance to use the flashbangs. <laughs> this is hilarious. They have no self-preservation instinct whatsoever. What happened to the guys who were all hiding from me during the climactic light array battle? Yep, come on. Line right up. Come on. I'm giving them away basically as charity at this point. Come on down. I'm actually really surprised they're not doing the holdout segment. Seems like this would be a perfect opportunity to do so. Uh, but this is one of the challenges in a game like this. The gameplay does start to get a bit repetitive regardless of the difficulty. Although it's certainly much less frustrating now, if less exciting. At a certain point, like, it does get repetitive to just keep saying like, oh, got you, got you, no you don't, got you. Whoops. Well, let's grab that manuscript page. Some things over here. Can I get more flare gun ammo? No? You're not gonna let me pick it up? Okay. I do still have the item limit. What? What is the item limit? It's 12. Turn back now. Nah.
You know, at a certain point, I feel like you should be running out of townspeople. There really weren't that many to begin with, and I feel like I've killed, like, hundreds. This game does actually have a stats screen. Yep, yep, I knew you'd be sending somebody from behind. You were too obvious and too far away. This game does actually have a stats screen, but I think it's persistent across playthroughs, so it wouldn't be an accurate representation of how many we've killed here. Yep, might as well just, like, it, there's no point in even wasting the battery, unless you're just going to keep coming. In which case... Ow. Hang on, I need one more bullet. Oh, or you could just die. Yeah, I hate it when my existence is tied to an objective trigger. You just dropped a boat in front of me. You think I'm impressed by your rocks? Yep. You're just slowing my roll at this point. You got one more before the end? We're almost out of the cave. No? Okay, just, just more boats. Uh, do I drop down here? Okay. Your attempts at intimidation are failing quite spectacularly. I have a feeling it shall not come nigh thee. You're not hitting me because you can't. I'm too close now. And we've made it to the Diver's Isle. Whoops, 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 whoops. Oh wow, that was almost like a cinematic transition right there, but it was actually just my view fading back in. Uh, watch me. More flare gun ammo! Oh, literally infinite flare gun ammo. Let's just start firing stuff in there and see what we kill. Yep, I can take this at a leisurely pace, actually. Just instantly disintegrating buses. Which wasn't my aim for the day, but it's something we can do now. Well, this has been fun, but I think I'm ready to move forward on this merry-go-round of death. Yeah, and I like this daydream. Look at it all disintegrate like that. The thing is, you're <laughs> that's meant to discourage me, but it's literally the reason I'm killing you right now. Is that all your birds? Maybe take that with you? You don't think you maybe might, like, need it? Now you're just gonna trust in this? <gasps> Being a writer, he knows the meaning of a bookend.
There's no light. Come back to bed and I'll make you forget all about your fear in the dark. My fear? It's your fear. Why aren't you afraid? You're not Alice. Turn the lights on now. Where's the clicker? What did you do with it? Alan? You're scaring me now. Come back to bed. Have you taken your pills? Do you want me to call Dr. Hartman? Come back to bed, Alan. Come back to bed, Tom. Oh no. He's Mr. Scott. Your friends will meet him when you're gone. What does that mean? Use the clicker. Uh Okay, not to spoil anything, but uh in another Twin Peaks reference, it seems like this game is even doing Mr. C? Years before he was a thing? That's a little bit creepy. Alright, well... I see, the words themselves are standing in for objects. They'll meet him when I'm gone. What does that mean? Does this mean that this is a one-way trip? That this is a path that I can't return from? That some kind of trade has to be made? It's like the story is coming apart, being broken down into its base elements. Your husband refused to do as he was told. All he had to do was write what I wanted him to write. Now it's too late. It's his fault. You'll stay here forever. Uh, all of this is like a climactic version of our first run back to the house when she called to us when the lights went out. Only this time we really do have to ward the dark itself away. Older than you. 
You're like 38. Older than your first work of art. I will find a new face to wear. Uh, someone else to dream me free. Alice's presence close by. I understood what I had to do now. I knew how to write the ending to departure. There's light and there's darkness. Cause and effect. There's guilt and there's atonement. But the scales always need to balance. Everything has a price. That's where Zane had gone wrong. There's a long journey through the night back into the light.
Oh, what an amazingly creepy and ambiguous line to end on. Oh, I can't wait for the sequel, huh? am I right? Uh, but from what I've heard, things are actually finally moving forward with that after over a decade. And there are, of course, the DLCs, which I have not played. And I'm not going to get onto them immediately, but perhaps I'll play them uh, sometime in the future. Uh, so that was Alan Wake, and we've got some David Bowie playing over the end, but unfortunately I am most certainly going to have to mute that. Because by now I've started to upload the previous parts, and it ha YouTube has given me grief with every single one. So I'm just going to not take any chances with this one. But yeah, that was Alan Wake, and Matt was so much better in the story department than I remember. I, I think at the time, I, I just didn't appreciate it. I think I came in expecting a horror game, and it wasn't all that scary. And all these things, the characters, I mean, besides the charm, the way the characters interact with each other, and the way things progress throughout the story... And just that incredible, frightening nature of the Entity in the Lake itself, I think that all just went over my head and totally unappreciated. Because I'm coming away from this with a much more positive opinion than I did the first time around. You don't even need a sequel, okay? I know, like, in some of this developer's future games, they've always referenced it. This has always kind of been their thing that they'd like to go back to, but never had the opportunity. You don't need to do more. I would be satisfied with that ending right there, but I'm certainly excited to see what they do with the franchise. It seems that in the end there, what happened was Alan took advantage of the fact that, yes, the Entity in the Lake does get its power and is able to manipulate reality through the things that creators create, but just as well, it's bound by them. And so what he essentially had to do was trap himself locked in that eternal battle in order to suppress it, to keep it locked away. But it seems like in the end there, he's also partly controlled by it like he was before. And thus, it may be able to use that to enhance its power in the future. Essentially stuck in this way for decades in basically an arms race, fighting over the typewriter to steer things in a direction that's basically destructive and harmless, constantly going back and forth until something wins out. It seems like what we're meant to take away is that the events that we saw did happen. Deerfest is going on, I mean, but maybe not? I mean... All those missing people and all that destruction doesn't seem to be hindering things. But Rose is still taken. Or maybe not. Maybe she's just traumatized. And that's why she's taken up the mantle of the new Lantern Lady. And it seems that the being in the lake has chosen Agent Nightingale as the new face. A, a, a lot was left up to implication there, and I think that's very fitting. I, I can't say that that's a bad thing, but it is leaving me with very little to talk about. I can speculate, but I just have no idea where it can go from there. Which I guess means the potential sequel has infinite, well, potential. One thing I really liked about this part in particular was how it does feel like a mad dash to the end. One continuous thing instead of a number of story beats. There's no dialogue with other characters or anything like that once it gets started. It's just one long gauntlet straight down the throat into the belly of the beast. Essentially recreating our run in the very beginning. Like we're writing past wrongs and bookending this whole story. He really did write the perfect ending, everything coming together, instead of just having a cop-out, which would have, I guess, led to him being consumed altogether. But I really feel like everything that was previously set up came together in just the perfect way 
for the emotional beats of the story to land. And I think my favorite thing about it all is that final flashback. Us getting to finally learn more about who Alan is as a person to the people around him. And we get to see why this all meant so much, not only to him, but to everyone around him. Which, in my opinion, just makes that ending all the more bittersweet. I kind of hope that the events are canon, are remembered by the others, so that they'll know what he did for them, but then again, maybe he'd write it so that they don't. Uh, once again, just so many gaps in information that anything could be placed into. Alan Wake's journey through the night will continue. Uh, I, I was fast-forwarding through the credits, but I don't know if you saw that. But it actually credited Alan himself as the author of those stories. Well, if you like this series... Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. If you have any ideas for other videos you think I should do, the best place to suggest that will be at the Discord, which I will link in the description. If you want to try this game out for yourself, that link will also be in the description. And as always, I will see you in the next one.